My name is Harry Shepard. I was born in 1928, a long time ago. I started playing music, banging on pots and pans in the kitchen. And my mother said, Dad, get him some drums. So I got drums when I was four years old. And at seven, I was taking lessons. And uh, at 21, I started playing the vibraphone. And uh, never went back to the drums. That was it. I started listening to Benny Goodman when I was a kid. And of course, he had Gene Krupa drums, Lionel Hampton and the vibes. And those were my two favorites. Those are my influences, my early influences. Started out uh, from Massachusetts with my new bride. I was a drummer and had just started playing some vibes. And she was a very fine singer, wonderful singer. And she took bass lessons. And she became a very good bass player. Amazed all of us, absolutely. Well, she had perfect pitch, so it was a lot easier than, than for most people. And she and we played together. We hired a guitar player to go with us. And we did USO shows. We traveled uh, through Korea in the, in the war, uh, Japan, the Philippines. We went to Europe, we went to France, Italy, North Africa. We had a blast. What broke our band up? Oh, golly. Uh, things happen, emotional things. It's, uh, there's no really one way to say why, but things happen with people. We decided, in, I think, in, in the 55, that we'd give up the road. And work in New York and maybe start a family. That's what we did. Exactly what we did. And I was playing here, playing there, playing there. And then one night I sat in at a club in Jackson Heights, Long Island. Saw Giga, the clarinetist, was doing a guest appearance there. And he liked the way I played, asked me if I would join him in the Metropole in New York six nights a week. And uh, it sounds very exciting. He says, well, I can give you a two-week tri two trial. So I said, okay. So I did it for two weeks, and two years later, I walked out. Get tired of it. Get burned out. But it was fun. Great fun. The Metropole was a big jazz club right in Times Square. It was right in the midst of all the theater district, all the theaters in, in, in New York City. And all the stars would come by, hang out, have a drink after the shows. Great, great times. It was, it was before rock and roll. Betty and I had the group together. We did a, a record, our trio did the vocal version of Cha 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 in Blue. The Cha Cha was just coming out then. It was big, 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 big time stuff in New York City. And we did it with Jose Corbello, a wonderful Latin. Jazz Latin group, which is great. It connected right away. It hit big time. All the the uh, the dancing shows on television and everything around New York. It was played on the radio all the time. That's all you heard. Well, it was just a single. The record company decided they didn't want to put a single out. They wanted to put an album, an LP. So they included it in another album. They didn't even mention us. They just eliminated, figuring they wouldn't have to pay us. <laughs> Which is the truth. We had this attorney try and this attorney, and it was it was such a mess. It, mostly because we never signed mistake. We never signed the contract to start with. It was all oh, wonderful. We're all friends. Let's do this record together. We never signed a contract, which you have to do. So it was tough to to get any money out of it. Experience. You learn life's experiences. <laughs> that's what was a Ford Motor product and I did the commercial on spec and your grandmother sang the, the lead to a wonderful vocal group I had Count Basie's rhythm section I had a uh, great announcer and we just did a demo it was very good it was smooth like a like a finished product it was like a whole new career for me I was so excited and I still am when I hear it my contact man said, uh, as soon as they decide on this, I'm sending you a check for 10000 immediately. This was 1957. 
you know what $10,000 was then? It's worth a lot of money. That was just the beginning. And it would have opened up a whole bunch of opportunities to, to write. Anyway, the board meeting came up, and that's when Ford decided to cancel the Edsel and, and retool for the Falcon. <clears throat> End of the story. I never got the check. <laughs> and all I have is a, is a, is a tape of, of the commercial. That's it. But that's fun. I was very proud of that. The most exciting thing, I think, started for me in 1956 when I, I got a chance to do three shows backing up Billie Holiday. And she was just superb, and, and it was actually the last year of her life. Of course, none of us knew that at the time, and uh, it was very, very thrilling to, to play for her. From that, we was touring here, touring there, South America, Europe, all over. I did some things with Doc Severinsen. We still remain friends, and uh, the year just went by, and I decided I just didn't want to work with bands anymore. I wanted to work with my own groups so I could express myself my own way. And uh, someone once told me, be true to yourself. So I'm trying. <laughs> and it seems to be working. I'm very happy. Uh, changing styles, going through different dimensions of, of jazz. And some of it's uh, almost uh, unqualified to categorize. And some of the jazz is, is uh, just kind of spacey. It's different. But I always try to reach an audience, somewhere, somehow. I don't try to play so far out that nobody understands what I'm doing. Somebody understands what I'm doing, somewhere. I'm not really a well-educated. I'm, I'm streetwise, streetwise jazz musician. So I have never had the qualifications to teach, although a lot of people come to me to, to teach them. And I simply tell them that uh, I don't do it. Any questions you want to ask, I'll be happy to answer. But uh, I just enjoy playing. I play eight nights a week, so it's a good life. At 78, to be playing eight nights a week is wonderful. I can remember the years and the places. Just a lot of, a lot of wonderful people throughout the years. Wonderful. A lot of, I was blessed by knowing a lot of great people, having a lot of love, a lot of uh, camaraderie. Great. Oh, there are a lot of stories, a lot of funny stories. In Basin Street East in New York, we went in to see Pops, Louis Armstrong. And I was with Cozy, we went back in his dressing room. And he had some of these African butts. And did one hit, one hit. Talked for a little bit, I went out, went to get my car, which was right down the street. Came out of the club, my car was maybe about five or six cars down the street. It took me two hours to find it. I walked around Manhattan for two hours looking for my car and didn't care if I found it or not. <laughs> that was Louis Armstrong. Oh, he had some good smoke. <laughs> I'm a newlywed, I don't want to tell old stories. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding, but I've never been happier in my life. Got a new CD coming out next spring. Two of them. That's exciting. You know what they say, so-and-so appeared and so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so and, -so, and they'll, they'll add, and many others. I was many others. <laughs> I was very fortunate to play with these legends, absolute legends. And I was very young. I hadn't established anything yet, anywhere. They just liked what I did, and so they called me and booked me, hired me to play with them. I never felt like I should be there, not back then. It was, uh, I just did it. I did it and I loved it, it was very exciting. And I was glad to be part of it because I was in my 20s. They were already in their 40s, most of them. Now I'm 78, they're all gone. Everybody, there's nobody to reminisce with.
Chadwick. Good audience. You want to hear some more? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> These are not easy questions, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 